So recently, a discussion came up on the Facebook page of the Nova Scotia Bushcraft Association concerning the use of fuel in small alcohol stoves like the Trangia or some of the DIY ones. And the discussion centered around the availability of high quality, safe to use fuel. In Nova Scotia, we find it difficult to find anything other than the methyl hydrate which you can buy at some of the hardware stores for use in those stoves. Heat, which I understand is commonly available in the United States and elsewhere, it just doesn't seem to be available here in Canada, at least not in Nova Scotia. The question was just how safe is methyl hydrate? It is an extremely poisonous substance. It does give off some very lethal fumes, so not a good idea to use in enclosed spaces and it can be soaked in through the skin. In addition, I did some testing on my own alcohol stoves here at home and you will see some of those tests on uh, videos on my channel. And the question came up, is methyl hydrate really all that efficient at heating as well? Well, I'm going to put that to the test today. If you're interested in seeing what I'm doing, stay tuned. Okay, before we get started, let me show you the two products we're going to be comparing one against the other. So on the left is a one liter container of 99.9% .9 pure methyl hydrate. On the right is a four liter container of marine alcohol, stove alcohol. So the contention is, is that the methyl hydrate is much more dangerous to use, first off, in an enclosed area where the fumes uh, might get inhaled, uh, that's very dangerous for your health, but in addition, methyl hydrate can soak in through the skin and you can get the toxins into your system that way. On the right, the marine alcohol is 90% corn-based ethanol with only 10% methyl hydrate added. And that is intended to be a much safer product to use on board ships, for instance, like a yacht or another cruiser or some type, where you're more likely to be in an enclosed environment and fumes could be a real issue. In addition, it's supposed to be less dangerous to soak in through the skin. However, they're both extremely flammable. And what we're testing today is, is there an efficiency difference between the two of them? So here in Canada, we just seem to can't find uh, heat, the, the product that seems to be most often used when you see videos testing alcohol stoves. All we seem to be able to find is the methyl hydrate. And that's worked fairly well for me, but I'm thinking it could be more efficient to be used in the marine alcohol. Now, and one other difference between the two of them is cost. So the methyl hydrate on the left, I purchased at Canadian Tire here in Halifax for $4.99. The marine alcohol on the right, I purchased the four liter container for $27. So there is a considerable cost increase going to the marine alcohol. Is it worth it? Well, let's just put a test together and see what we can come up with. All right, so how I'm gonna conduct this test is just very simple and please, do not try to compare me against Hiram Cook. I in no way can reach Hiram Cook's knowledge or experience working with alcohol stoves, and I don't intend to. I just want to try to create as fair a test as possible with reproducible results here in the home kitchen of my home. So why, the reason I'm doing it in my, in my kitchen is controlled environment. So I can control the temperature, I can control the wind and, and those type of factors. Now I also want to point out for safety's sake, while I'm doing this on top of my stove, I do have a range hood with ventilation above it that I'll be using to draw the fumes out. In addition, both of the windows are open in my kitchen, so I've got maximum air ventilation. In fact, you may hear somebody with a lawnmower in the neighbors next door. So for this test, here's what I'm going to be using. This is my Alox uh, alcohol burner. It's a Trangia knockoff very similar to the Esbit stove. That's what I'm going to be using. I'm also going to be using a small aluminum stand that came with it intended for its use. Now anybody who knows these stands will know that it's not uh, the pot standoff to the pot is not exactly the considered the one inch sweet spot and for this test I don't believe that's going to be important because it's going to be a comparison against fuels not equipment just fuel. So I'm going to be using the same stove, same pot stand, same temperature gauge and I'm going to be using my GSI stainless steel catalyst which has two cups of water right now in it sitting at a temperature of 72 degrees Fahrenheit. So the first test is going to involve one ounce of methyl hydrate, which I'll pour in now. I'll place that inside of my stove. Make sure I'm still in frame, I am, good. I'll spark it up. And I'm gonna turn the light off for a second just so we can watch it come to a bloom. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. And once it comes to a bloom, I'll put the kettle on and start the timer.
Let's get a little closer. Daylight, it's always a little bit difficult to see. Yeah, okay, we have come to a bloom. So I'm going to put the kettle on now. Make sure this is able to see all the things we have going on here. So kettle is on, and we'll start the timer. All right, rather than watch this for however long it takes, I will let the camera run, but I will either speed it up, like something like Hiram Cook would do, or I'll cut it out and bring it back just as it comes to the boiling point, which should work with the alarm. Okay, stand by. All right, I guess that was 212 degrees Fahrenheit in 7 minutes 42 seconds. I'll just have a look at the screen again to make sure. Let's take the kettle off. It is boiling hard. We'll snuff out the burner so I can see how much alcohol is left. And we'll wait for everything to cool down and we'll set up for the next test. Okay, stand by. Yeah, I thought I'd uh, show you this as well when I'm waiting for uh, everything to cool down. There is, I don't know if I can show this properly, there is alcohol in the bottom of the stove. So it didn't use the full ounce. Uh, hard to say, I know that I can't drain this out and get an accurate measurement, but uh, when I look at it, it seems to be about a sixteenth of an inch deep in the center of the pot. So I will have to drain that out before I can add the other alcohol to it. So uh, one ounce here in the control conditions of my kitchen. Uh, more than adequate using the methyl hydrate. But of course, the, this test is all about comparing the two fuels together. So we'll get set up for the second test. Okay, let's get set up for the second test. So for the second test, we're using the Captain Fab Marine Alcohol. And let me just show you this. You can immediately see a difference. This has got a nice tint to it, so a light blue tint. Should be easier to identify and not mistake for uh, anything other than what it is. Uh, I will tell you though, it has a nice alcohol smell. If I didn't know there was methyl hydrate in this, I would consider this something that you might want to drink. Uh, don't think about that, of course. This is going to be dangerous for anybody, but it is a nice, uh, nicer smelling. Let's see if I can get it in there. There we go. So that's one ounce of the Dr. Fab alcohol. Place that in the stand. Make sure I'm in the camera range. Good. I'll spark that up. Fill it up readily. Make sure we can see it coming to a bloom. You know, I don't get much of a smell off the methyl hydrate when I am burning it, but there is a slight smell. And uh, I haven't turned the uh, oven range on just yet, or the range hood on just yet, but I will in a moment. And I just, uh, I'm not getting any smell at all off of this, which is kind of interesting. Okay, we've come to a bloom. We'll put the kettle on. And start the timer. All right, and as with the last test, I'll either speed this up or, or uh, stop the camera. I think I'll probably I'll just let it run through and speed it up when I go to record it back to you. And we'll see how long this takes to come to a boil. Stand by. Okay, I don't know if you can see what's happening right now, but uh, for some reason the stove decided to flare up and um, you can see flames coming up the side of the kettle. And I don't know if it's a breeze coming in through the window, but it seems to be creating a lot more flame than the methyl hydrate did. And uh, I'm just going to have to keep a close eye on this. I don't see it getting out of control, but I'm just going to have to keep a close eye on this. The, it looks like a very clean flame underneath, but just maybe a bit more intense than the methyl hydrate was putting out. And we're getting very close to the 212 mark. And then we'll do a comparison in time and see just how much is left, or left in the uh, stove. There we go. I think that was 7.30 or 7.31. I will take the kettle off boil. You can see just how high the flames are reaching up from this. Still got a bit of alcohol in it. I'll snuff that out. 
We'll let that cool down. We'll just see how much alcohol is left in the stove afterwards. All right, stand by. All right, everything's cooling down. And I wanted to show you what's left in the stove. So there is a, quite a bit of alcohol. This is the marine alcohol, quite a bit of it left in the stove. And it appears to be more than it was left of the methyl hydrate. Not a lot more, maybe half again as much. So there is a, it does seem to be a little bit more efficient in terms of fuel usage. But uh, let's wrap this up with a few words and I'll give you my thoughts on what, uh, what occurred today. All right, stand by. Okay, let's uh, wrap up with a few closing words. I don't know what I expect. Well, I do know what I was hoping for. I was hoping because I paid more for the marine alcohol that it'd be that much more efficient, that much more cleaner burning, and that much faster when it brought the water to a boil. I don't think that was the case. Um, it has some advantages maybe, but I think they're more related to health than they are efficiency of the fuel. So what we saw using one ounce of the methyl hydrate, it brought two cups of water to a boil in 7 minutes 45 seconds and there was fuel left over. Not a lot but there was fuel left over. Okay that's respectable. Then I used the marine alcohol, one ounce of the marine alcohol, two cups of water, same temperature. It brought two cups of water to a boil in six minutes, oh no sorry, seven minutes 34 seconds. 11 seconds difference. I wouldn't call that significant. Not enough to say that the marine alcohol is a clear winner in this test. Now Mind you, this was my first time using that test. The stove I was using may be less than ideal, but it's the stove that I use when I go out. So I figured that's what I wanted to use. The stove that I use, comparing it against one fuel against the other. What are my conclusions on this? Well, I think one test is not enough to base really fair conclusions on. But to, at this point, I don't see a clear advantage of the marine alcohol over the methyl hydrate. There was that one other observation that I had while I was using the marine alcohol where it was flaring up around the side of the stove. So it did seem to be burning hotter, faster. And results were 10 seconds in the difference. I wouldn't call that significant. The other thing is, is the methyl hydrate is much less expensive than the marine alcohol. Now, the one big difference is the health factor. So if you consider the, uh, the hazard to your health from methyl hydrate, as something significant to you, then you may want to go to the marine alcohol. It is more expensive, but it should be safer to your health. Okay, that's all I have to offer. I open this up to suggestions, comments, uh, observations you've had. Maybe you've compared the two. Uh, again, I don't have heat that I can compare it to. So if I ever do find that, I might try that comparison as well. But until that occurs, get out and explore. Take the path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.